What up, dicks? Welcome to your week four recap of debauchery and arrogance. It was an exciting, although low point scoring week with seven teams finishing with less than 95 points total. But exciting nonetheless. The Saints got their first win in the NFL and I got my first win in debauchery and arrogance. So let's get started. First game to cover Dan's Fitna Eat vs. Mac Attack. Dan entering week 4, 3 0, and Jesse entering 2 1. Final score 92.7 to 129.4. Jesse squashes Dan like a grape. Jesse's main stud, Russell Wilson, and her side piece, Megatron, both had decent days, scoring over plus 10, but this week, Jesse's loins were frothing for a new hunk of man meat, a Mr. Vincent Jackson, who had 10 receptions on 15 targets for 147 yards and one touchdown, putting up 30.7 points. I understand why her loins are so frothy. Dan, Dan was a victim of the Froster letdown, which was a big, big event of this week in fantasy, but it's worth pointing out. There is no combination of players that Dan could have fielded that would have beaten Jesse. Jesse would have won no matter what. Game number two. Sir Good Dirt or something like that versus Hate to Game. Final score of 185.3 to 109.1. Brett had six players scoring over 10 points. Six out of 11. Good luck, best of luck, trying to... Uh, excuse me trying to beat his team this year. I mean, again, frustrating to me. He's just, he's really good. Wells did not have Brady. God damn it, Drew, but maybe that contributed to it. And um, worth noting, Wells put up 85.3 points and his bench scored 94. You don't see that very often. So I'm kind of dubbing, even though Wells didn't have the lowest score of the week, he was the biggest loser. Stop your weed eating! Game three to cover. Sad Dogs versus Burt Macklin, FBI. Guy entered the game one and two. Taylor entered, oh, I didn't, I didn't put the note there. Whatever. Um, it was the highest scoring game of the week. Final score of 156.3 to 123.5. Guy prevails. Guy. Devontae Freeman, the fantasy sensation of the 2015 season thus far, in my opinion. And you had Spiller, who came alive this week. And you have Bell. Guy is flush with running backs. And he is 2-2. Two and two. Um, Taylor is insanely strong at wide receiver. He had two receivers with putting up more than 140 receiving yards. And Jeremy Macklin with 98. And by the way, side note, Ch Taylor, your owner name, not your team name, needs to be changed. It's just really annoying to me. You're Logitech instead of Taylor White. I don't get it. <laughs> Favorite game to cover of the week. Yours truly versus... Former champion Sam Sanderson. I entered the week 0 and 3, and Sam entered 2 and 1. Final score: 118 to 83.4. Andy Dalton. I mean, it's frustrating that he's been good when Brady's been fault. I mean, when not Brady, Breeze has been faltering. Even though Breeze outscored him, I went with Dalton this week. Really proud of the results I've been getting thus far. And my kicker, I don't even know how to say his name. I've never said it out loud until this moment. Catanzaro. Catanzaro. <sighs> he scored 17 points for me this week. Sam's been plagued by injuries, though. I'll give him that. Beast Mode was hurt, didn't play this week. Tony Romo's been out. And then in the first half of the game, if I'm not mistaken, Eric Ebron went out. It was Sam's last hope of staying in this game, even though it was a very tall order of more than 30 points to catch up to me. But it's worth noting, there is no combination of players that Sam had on his 
starting lineup or bench that could have beaten me. Game five. Big matchup in terms of personal relationships taking place here on the fantasy field. Jake versus Micah. Dez, suck Dez nuts or whatever Jake's terrible name is versus Dem Boys about it. Jake enters the matchup 0-3 and, and Micah enters 1-2. Final score 77.6 to 94.2. Micah prevails. It's worth noting here. Micah has not scored more than 100 points since week one. Micah right now, there's not much to say about him. He's a portrait of mediocrity. Jake's team, however, is a, it's not just a dumpster fire. It's a dumpster fire at a hospital. He is plagued by injuries. And then this week, Lance Dunbar gets hurt. Honestly, just, I pity you, Jake. I pity you. Last game to cover. Barton versus Drew. Saggy butt, Peyton saggy butt, whatever squad that's Barton's team versus keeper of the year for Drew. Barton enters the week one and two, and Drew enters the week two and one. Final score of 70.5 to 94. If I'm not mistaken, that is the lowest scoring matchup of the week. Barton, it was a rough week. Um, only Ladarius Green at tight end had more than 10 points for him. And that includes Peyton Manning. Barton had the lowest points total in week four, so you're competing for Wells for having the worst week. Um, Drew, I mean, how does this make you feel? Rivers did m many times over better than Peyton this week. You benefited by having him instead of Peyton. Just pointing that out. Week five of debauchery and arrogance lies ahead. We have three very, very historic matchups, which year in, year out, prove to be exciting to watch. We have Jesse versus Micah. We have Sam vs. Brett, where we see champion vs. champion. And we have Barton vs. Jake, which we'll dub the Two Bros Ball. Two Bros Bowl. So we're all excited to watch, and I'll see you again next week, assholes.